a child, Sundays in Kings Lynn were often spent at my grandparents' house in Archdale Street. After lunch, life took a turn for the tedious, as inactivity and the sound of snoring took their toll. Mercifully, there was an escape, to the end of the backyard and through the gate to where another world lay waiting within the clear waters of the Gaywood River. Here, sitting on the bank with my toes sometimes in the water, aquatic plants waved gently in the flow and fish hid among their greenery. It was almost a parallel world beyond the reflected sky and it kept me entranced for hours. Returning to the town recently, I went back to revisit my old friend, the Gaywood. I discovered that the river has undergone a depressing transformation. Gone is the water within Toe's Reach, now dredged a good bit lower between steep banks and with very few remaining riverside trees. Gone are the plants that made up much of the underwater world, dredged out every summer and dumped on the bank. Gone are almost all the fish and the crystal clear water in which they swam. Today's Gaywood River is largely lifeless and heavily loaded with silts, agricultural fertilisers and waste, sometimes including untreated human waste discharged from sewage outfalls like this one in Kettlewell Lane. Ironically, it was from here at the Kettle Well that the waters of the Gaywood supplied Lynn with very clean drinking water, drawn and distributed around the town, for those that could afford it, in timber conduits. One ran the length of what became known as New Conduit Street. There's no argument that this once beautifully clean river has been degraded to this dreadful low. As kids, most of us took the various rivers and streams that flow into the ooze and the wash for granted. We crossed them on the way to the beach, on Wooden Road, their Onion Corner at Castle Rising, in Inglesthorpe, Sedgeford, Heacham, and for that matter also at Castle Acre. Little did I realise how special these rivers are. Each is a globally rare chalk stream. There are only around 200 in the world. 17 are in Norfolk of which seven are within 15 miles of Lynn. Most, like the Nar, Ingol and Babingley, really are in very good condition. Clear, shallow, often quite fast flowing, and as I well remember, always numbingly cold, even in summer. Their beds are of gravel, chalk, flint and sand, and characteristic plants grow prolifically, giving shelter and breeding grounds to many species, including the now critically endangered European eel and these beautiful brown trout in the Babingley, seen just this spring. The Gaywood River starts in a similar state up around Grimston and Gayton, but sadly things take a turn for the worse. It becomes the exception, and it's particularly galling that it's this degraded river that runs through Lynn, most accessibly at Gaywood itself and in the walks, where it tracks paths past the children's playground, the Redmount Chapel and the Gunnock Gate. I'm going to try and find out what's happened and how the Gaywood River has become Norfolk's forgotten chalk stream. The answers are essentially in the river's own story. So, let's start at the beginning. Chalk is a common porous rock formed from the skeletons of billions of now extinct creatures that lived and died on what were then warm seas. Chalk streams expert Charles Rangeley Wilson explains that in England and France, the massive chalk layers have been lifted to the surface and polished clean by glaciers, but, crucially, they've not been worn away. And it's this clean but intact chalk downland, 
coinciding with our rain-swept landscape and temperate climate that gives us chalk streams as we know them. The rain percolates down into fissures and through the porous rock. It can take anywhere between 6 months and 60 years before it eventually re-emerges from the ground as springs bubbling up pure clean water all along the edge of the ridge. At this source, each of our chalk streams from the Hun to the Nar are pretty much identical and have long been valued as sources of safe drinking water, including the Gaywood River here at Grimston. It's no coincidence that many ancient settlements and religious buildings can be found near West Norfolk's chalk springs, which run cool and clear year round at a constant temperature of 10 degrees. We are custodians of a globally unique ecosystem, right here in West Norfolk. Such a source of drinking water is incredibly valuable and today millions of gallons is taken from ground sources on the ridge and piped direct to Lynn and beyond where we use it to wash our cars and flush our toilets. Some of it we even drink. There are concerns that even before the water reaches the springs, over abstraction will cause the output from the springs to reduce and to make less water available to keep the streams flowing and clean. The Environment Agency reported in 2007 that the whole of Anglia Waters region, including Kings Lynn, is designated as an area of serious water stress. That means shortage. Agriculture has become almost entirely arable in recent years. It depends on ploughing and added chemical inputs, fertilisers, pesticides, weed control, to ensure intensive production. During heavy rain, these chemicals can easily run off into watercourses, especially where the land is cultivated right up to the bank. Once in the water, biocides can kill off aquatic life, and fertilisers encourage the growth of fungus and algae. As well as the chemicals, soil is often washed into the streams, where the fine silt chokes aquatic life. The Babingley runs clear and clean, whereas the Gaywood is heavily silted. Take a casual glance into the Babingley and Gaywood rivers where they cross the A149 road, either side of Knights Hill, and you'll see the difference between the two rivers at the same stage and just a couple of miles apart. So what's going on? There seem to be a whole set of problems. Pollution getting into our rivers includes road runoff, which contains a couple of really nasty chemicals as well as the more obvious industrial waste and raw sewage, including everything that goes down the toilet and drain. Human and food waste, sanitary products, cleaning products, a rich mix that contributes to the stress on the river and chokes off the natural aquatic life. Then there's the deliberate littering of the river. The Babingley's course takes it through the wooden marshes, whereas the Gaywood River runs through town where littering is more common and supermarket trolleys are more available. It's said that the best way to stop littering is to pick it up and reduce the assumed permission to litter that rubbish on the ground implies. Some sections of the riverbank through Lynn are kept quite clean, but others are currently so heavily littered that it can only be seen as an encouragement to treat the river as a waste disposal system. Chalk streams in the best condition meander naturally, have natural obstacles in the watercourse such as fallen trees both of which cause the water to scour the bed of silt, exposing the gravel, which fish love to spawn in. The clean water encourages growth of characteristic aquatic plants, which provide cover for young fish, and which themselves take up excess nutrients from the water, keeping it flowing clean and clear. The Babingley follows a largely natural course, and is in generally pretty good health right down to the water marshes where it becomes tidal. By contrast, the Gaywood has been extensively dredged and straightened from Borsey right down into the town. The water is often sluggish and the aquatic environment is regularly cleared of beneficial plants and associated wildlife. Riverside trees are cleared to allow access for dredging equipment, further impoverishing the environment, turning what was once a clear chalk stream into nothing more than a lifeless drainage ditch. 
A number of initiatives have been undertaken along the Gaywood River over the past 20 years, but additional strain has been put on from pollution and relentless dredging. As a result, meaningful progress has been limited. Anglia Water, the Environment Agency, Drainage Board, landowners, farmers and the rest of us all have responsibilities to bear in the degradation of the Gaywood River. Among the statutory bodies, there's much trumpeting of positive action that's taken and denial of negative effects of their operations. The river's declined slowly over several years in ways that many people may not even have noticed. In recent years, large sums of money have been invested in the walks, raising the profile of the whole park as an incredible asset to the community and as a visitor attraction. If only the river that flows through it was as clean as it is in its upper reaches only a few miles away, it would add real benefits to the walks, to the small park in Kettlewell Lane and the riverside path linking the town centre with Wooten Road. The nearby rivers Ingol and Nar have benefited from some brilliant restoration programmes recently. The treated outflow from a sewage works on the Ingol is directed through four newly created wetland areas which naturally reduce nutrient loads before the water is returned back into the river. At Castle Lake, the Nar has been re-wiggled to create a more natural flow to benefit the river and its habitats. To plan effective measures, chalkstream restoration experts need to know exactly what the problems are and where they're occurring. This is also an important part of maintaining the quality of the river after restoration. In Gloucestershire and Herefordshire, citizen science volunteers have taken on close monitoring of water quality in the River Wye. As a result, they're able to quickly pinpoint pollution incidents and hold the statutory agencies to account in tackling them. The people of Lynn could take an active part in monitoring the Gaywood, rather than simply entrusting such work to the organisations that effectively police themselves. Bodies such as the Norfolk Rivers Trust implement beneficial measures, but it seems that in the case of the Gaywood River, unless measures are coordinated, the benefits are likely to be limited. For example, cutting pollution will help, but if the river is still overdredged, the aquatic environment will remain hostile to plants and fish. If pollution and dredging problems are solved, agricultural runoff will still damage the water. Silt suspended in the water will continue to choke life in the river until measures such as silt traps and renaturalisation of the course of the river are undertaken. Unless we all take responsibility to ensure that only rain goes down the drain, and we shift the littering culture alongside the river, it will remain a dead feature in the heart of our town. In essence, unless all the problems are reduced, not a lot will change. Turning the river around to restore it to be a real asset for Lynn and its people, we'll all need to play our part. We can no longer entrust its future to the agencies that have thus far failed it, and us. In addition, our MPs and councillors need to be encouraged, and put under some pressure from us, to finally take the necessary steps to ensure that the Gaywood River becomes a celebrated source of pride for us in the area and a great example of what can be achieved. Never again to be Norfolk's forgotten chalk stream. Mm -hmm.